George Abbott was an English divine who was Archbishop of Canterbury from 1611 to 1633. He also served as the fourth Chancellor of Trinity College, Dublin, from 1612 to 1633. Chambers' Biographical Dictionary describes him as, a, sincere but narrow-minded Calvinist. Among his five brothers, Robert became Bishop of Salisbury and Maurice became Lord Mayor of London. He was a translator of the King James Version. Born at Guilford in Surrey, where his father Maurice Abbott was a cloth worker, he was taught at the Royal Grammar School, Guilford. According to an 18th-century biographical dictionary, when Abbott's mother was pregnant with him she had a dream in which she was told that if she ate a pike her child would be a son and rise to great prominence. Sometime afterward she accidentally caught a pike while fetching water from the river way and it being reported to some gentlemen in the neighborhood, they offered to stand sponsors for the child, and afterwards showed him many. Marks of favor. He later studied, and then taught under many eminent scholars, including Dr. Thomas Holland, at Balliol College, Oxford, was chosen Master of University College in 1597, and appointed Dean of Winchester in 1600. He was three times Vice-Chancellor of the University, and took a leading part in preparing the authorized version of the New Testament. In 1608, he went to Scotland with George Hone, 1st Earl of Dunbar to arrange for a union between the Churches of England and Scotland. He so pleased King James in this affair that he was made Bishop of Lichfield and Coventry in 1609 and was translated to the See of London a month afterwards. Abbott's Hospital in Guildford on March 4, 1611, Abbott was raised to the position of Archbishop of Canterbury. As Archbishop, he defended the apostolic succession of Anglican bishops and the validity of the Church's priesthood in 1614. In consequence of the Nags Head fable, the Archbishop invited certain Roman Catholics to inspect the register in the presence of six of his own Episcopal colleagues, the details of which inspection were preserved. It was agreed by all parties that, the register agrees in every particular with what we know of the history of the times, and there exists not the semblance of a reason for pronouncing it a forgery. In spite of his defense of the Catholic nature of the priesthood, his Puritan instincts frequently led him not only into harsh treatment of Roman Catholics, but also into courageous resistance to the royal will, such as when he opposed the scandalous divorce suit of the Lady Frances Howard against Robert Devereux. Third Earl of Essex, and again in 1618 when, at Croydon, he forbade the reading of the Declaration of Sports listing the permitted Sunday recreations. He was naturally, therefore, a promoter of the match between the King's daughter, Princess Elizabeth, and Frederick V, Elector Palatine and a firm opponent of the projected marriage of the new Prince of Wales and the Spanish Infanta, Maria Anna. This policy brought upon the Archbishop the hatred of William Laud and the King's court, although the King himself never forsook Abbott. In July 1621, while hunting in Lord Zotch's Park at Bramshill in Hampshire, a bolt from his crossbow aimed at a deer happened to strike one of the keepers. Who died within an hour, and Abbott was so greatly distressed by the event that he fell into a state of settled melancholia. His enemies maintained that the fatal issue of this accident disqualified him for his office, and argued that, though the homicide was involuntary, the sport of hunting which had led to it was one in which no clerical person could lawfully indulge. The king had to refer the matter to a commission of ten, though he said that an angel might have miscarried after this sort. The commission was equally divided. And the king gave a casting vote in the archbishop's favor, though signing also a formal pardon or dispensation. Gustavus Payne notes that Abbott was both the only translator of the 1611 Bible and the only Archbishop of Canterbury ever to kill a human being. The tomb of George Abbott in Holy Trinity Church. Guilford after this the Archbishop seldom appeared at the council, chiefly on account of his infirmities. In 1625 he attended the king constantly, however, in his last illness, and performed the ceremony of the coronation of King Charles I as King of England. His refusal to license the Assize sermon preached by Dr. Robert Sibthorpe at Northampton on February 22, 1627, in which cheerful obedience was urged to the King's demand for a general loan. And the duty proclaimed of absolute non-resistance even to the most arbitrary royal commands, led Charles to deprive him of his functions as primate, putting them in commission. The need of summoning Parliament, however, soon brought about a nominal restoration of the Archbishop's powers. His presence being unwelcome at court, he lived from that time in retirement, leaving Laud and his party in undisputed ascendancy. He died at Croydon on August 4, 1633, and was buried at Guilford, his native place, where he had endowed Abbott's hospital with lands to the value of £300 a year. George Abbott, 
Archbishop of Canterbury Abbot was a conscientious prelate, though narrow in view and often harsh towards both separatists and Roman Catholics. He wrote a large number of works, the most interesting being his discursive exposition on the prophet Jonah, which was reprinted in 1845. His geography, or a brief description of the whole world, passed through numerous editions. The newest edition, edited by the current master of the Abbot's Hospital, was published by Goldenford Publishers Limited on June 20, 2011, to commemorate the 400th anniversary of his enthronement as Archbishop of Canterbury. Guilford remembers the Archbishop with his hospital, a statue in the high street, a pub and also a secondary school named after him. His tomb can be seen in Holy Trinity Church. The best account of Abbot is in Samuel Rossengardner's History of England. Thanks for watching.